بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب الله رب العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المزلومين ولعنة الدائم على أدائهم أجمعين أما بعد سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our program the leader of the faithful uh, we will be having a series of program uh, to discuss uh, the personality of Amir al uh, Myself, uh, Mirza Abbas, and also uh, with me is Hujjatul uh, Islam wal Muslimin, Sheikh Ayyub. Uh, welcome, Sheikh. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. And welcome to all our viewers as well. Alhamdulillah. Uh, very glad to be here. Tabriq, congratulations, greetings, and felicitations. Asadallah, yamakum. Uh, obviously, when we uh, are looking into the personality of Amir al the first thing that strikes, even for a three-year-old or a four-year-old, is that the birth of Amir al in the Kaaba. It is so fascinating, it is so amazing, that we haven't seen uh, in the history of mankind that a person being born inside the house of God inside that very place where it is the Qibla of for all Muslims, right? I mean, it's like whenever you see Kaaba, the first thing you're reminded is that, oh, Amirul Mu'mineen was born inside the Kaaba. It's really amazing. So I think, uh, you know, the birthplace is very important. Don't you think so, Sheikh Ayyub? Indeed, indeed. I think uh, uh, each and every one of us, uh, when you remember you were born in this particular village or town or city, uh, that particular place will stay with you forever. And uh, whatever you can say and whenever you remember that, it brings some kind of happiness. Now, when you remember that Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam was born inside al Kaaba, this by itself is, is the greatest honor for him. Allah elevated him to the highest status. If we cannot speak about anything about Imam Ali alayhi salam except his birth inside the al Kaaba, then that by itself is a sharaf. It is an honor. It is a respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, for this, then uh, you come to, to, to ask yourselves, uh, what else can we talk about Imam Ali? If he's beginning, his beginning right. is from the house of Allah. Exactly. And at the same time, I mean, uh, the person who is being born, he doesn't have any control of his birth. Mm. It's not like, okay, I want to born here, I want to born there, be born there. Mm. You mm. know, it's really God who decides where this person is and when this person should be born, where this person should be born. Indeed. And at the same time, when we look at the month, Mm. The, you know, Rahmatul mm -hmm. Wasi'ah, as we recite in du'as of Rajab. You know, Rajab is known as the month of mercy. Indeed. You know, and it's like, wow. And also, the first day of Ayyam al you mm -hmm. know, the, those 13th, 14th, and 15th are Indeed. very important nights as well. Indeed. So the time and place, mm. both are in the hands of God. Yeah, this by itself, it shows that uh, Imam Amirul Mu'mineen was blessed from day one by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, as you say, if, if one may miss maybe uh, the place of the birth of Amirul Mu'mineen, but then the month, one cannot miss the month of Rajab, Rajabul Murajab, this holy month where it's the beginning of Rabi'ul Qulub, Rabi spiritual beginning. It's a sp spring of uh, spiritual elevation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Now, when you remember those uh, days, then you remember that Ali alayhi salam was indeed honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this shows a lot. And another thing today, when we look, for example, at al Kaaba itself, uh, people have said that uh, for Ali to be born there, how, how did it happen? This was a miracle. First of all, we come to know that al Kaaba not only Muslims today, they own al Kaaba. Even before the declaration of uh, Risala, the message of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, 
people of Mecca used to honor Al Kaaba because the history of Ibrahim alayhi salam came and uh, he built Al Kaaba mm -hmm. uh, with the assistance from his son Ismail alayhi salam. Then you come to know that there were people who used to honor Al Kaaba, go for tawaf around Al Kaaba. So when the mother of Amirul Mu'mineen, Fatima binti Asad, came and she found that people were doing tawaf. Even though some of them were mushrikeen, they were doing ibadah according to their beliefs, but she managed to enter into al Kaaba. So now the, the, the point which we, we may think here is, how did she manage within the commo commotion of the people who were there? She went inside al Kaaba. she stayed there for three days, she gave birth to Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, and people didn't cause any trouble to her until when she decided to come. Th this by itself is a miracle truth. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. And also, it's not by the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's from right something that is opposite to the door. Yeah. You know, it's not by the side of the door or right opposite, you know, where, you know, the, the, the wall of the Kaaba cracks open and, we, and the signs which we still see today. Indeed. Right, in the Kaaba itself. And from that time up until now, People have time and time again, the Khulafa of time and time again, the kings time and time again, try to really, you know, close that sort of uh, crack mm -hmm. that exists, mm -hmm. but still it stands out. Indeed. It's clearly there. Indeed. You know? And I think, I think this is to show us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam is his religion. He chose Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to be his, his last messenger. But with any Nabi, there is Waswi. So if there is something we can learn from this event of the birth of Imam Amirul Mumin in, in the Holy Kaaba, it means that whenever you remember Rasulullah, you can't miss Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is, is a, a sign where many years after, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Ali, la yuhibbuka illa mu'min. Mm -hmm. O Ali, no one will love you except a believer. And no one will hate you except a munafiq. Mm -hmm. So if you remember Rasulullah, you remember Ali. You mention Rasulullah, you, you mention Ali bin Abi Talib. They will always go hand to hand. The yeah. Rasulullah propagated Islam. Kaaba was the center, the focal point of the message of Islam. And Ali, you can see him with Rasulullah from day one of his uh, right. coming into this right. world. Uh, it also points out to the, uh, you know, the, uh, how should I say, the station, you know, the maqam, mm. the station mm. of Fatima bint Asad. Indeed. And also of Hazrat Abu Talib, you know, who, was, who took care of the Prophet right from the, you know, very young age when Prophet became orphan. And Prophet chose, as, uh, you know, as the history says that, Abdul Muttalib, you know, basically uh, kind of gave that free choice to the Prophet, who mm. to choose. There were many uncles, mm -hmm. but he chose Abu Talib, alayhi salam, for, for being in his house. Now, this points out to the, uh, the station of these two individuals, these two personality, Fatima bint Asad, uh, and how she and Abu Talib took care of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. And it seems like God is returning a favor. Hal jazaul ahsan illa al ahsan. Mm. So God kind of said, okay, you know, you have taken care of my Habib. Allah. You know, you have taken care of when he was orphan. And uh, this act of Hazrat Abu Talib, God refers to as his act. Mm. You know, he says that when you were yatim, we took care of you. Mm -hmm. So mm. God is taking care through the medium, mm. through the vehicle, you know, which is you know, Hazrat Abu Talib alayhi salam. Subhanallah. This, this, this point is very important and, uh, and especially when you connect it with Surah Alam Yajidka Yatiman Fa'awa Ya Prophet O Muhammad Allah didn't he fi find you an, oh, as an orphan then he took care of you he gave you shelter yes we, we look at Abdul Muttalib as the grandfather of the Holy Prophet Abdul Muttalib the father of Ima, uh, 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 Abu Talib the uncle of the Holy Prophet, yes, he took care of Rasulullah. But then the care of Abu Talib, as you could see, it, it was immense care. And Abu Talib, the way we, we, we study the history, he wasn't so rich. 
in terms of material uh, things, but he was so rich in his heart. Mm -hmm. The way yeah. the history tells us that he made sure that food will not be served until Rasulullah is there. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. when he was a child, he would go play, but however the time for lunch or dinner, he will make sure that Rasulullah is there. Right. And I believe the way you have said that Fatima binti Asad as a mother had a major role to play in the upbringing of the Holy Prophet because the Holy Prophet lost the father just before he was born. And then he lost the mother, Amina binti Wahab, when the Holy Prophet was six years of age. So the one who took care most of the time is Fatima binti Asad. Yes. And you can see the, the relationship between Rasulullah and Amina uh, yeah. uh, Fatima binti Asad yeah. from Makkah when she took care of Rasulullah. And even after Hijrah, mm -hmm. when they migrated to Medina, you could see that the Holy Prophet was so closer to Fatima binti Asad until the death of Fatima happened. The Holy Prophet himself entered the grave yeah. and he lied on the grave. Companions asked Rasulullah, we haven't seen you doing this uh, act to any of your companions. Why? And then he said, it's because I want my body and the baraka and the shafa'a which Allah has given me to reach this noble lady, yes. Fatima binti Asad. Right. Why? Because of the ihsan mm -hmm. she, she, saw, she, saw, uh, she showed to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then you can see that Rasulullah to return the favor, he took Imam Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali bin Abi Talib to raise him in his house right. to say that, okay, I will try to do something to Ali. Right. So it's amazing, you know, the, the whole family, uh, you know, the, 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 the tarbiyah. And, and it, it actually it was really that, that training of uh, Hazrat Abu Talib and Hazrat Fatima bint Asad to Amirul Mu'mineen to be someone who, could, who would always protect the Prophet, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib always placed the Prophet first, Indeed. just like how the father, his father did. You know, is that tarbiyat of Hazrat Fatima bin Asa? Is the mm -hmm. tarbiyat of Amirul Mumini? And this actually goes back to that that recognition, that marifat, which Hazrat Abu Talib had. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the marifat of Fatima bin Asa, mm -hmm. that they they know that this is the Prophet. Indeed. This is Akmalul Nas, mm -hmm. Akmalul Insan, Akmalul Ambiya. Is the best. Is the most perfect. They have that marifat and understanding. The more the marifat, the more the understanding, the more the knowledge, the care will be greater. You know, if there be something very precious, you know, I will be taking care of that with all my heart, with everything, no matter what, I will take care of that. Mm -hmm. So that's how Hazrat Abu Talib, that's how, you know, Fatima bin Asad. And this, you know, tend to be seen over and over again repetitively in history. Mm -hmm. You know, then you have... For example, just I got reminded, you know, uh, going t into the margin, I'll just quickly mention like Hazrat Amul Banin. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, I'm entering the house of Ali as a slave Allah. to take care of the children of Zahra. Mm -hmm. Going back to that marifat. Ma and then if the mother have that marifat, then the children will be like Abbas. Allah. So the mother Fatima bin Asad have that marifat. The child is like Ali. Ali bin Abi Talib. So that marifat they had. Indeed, and this you know. marifat I think is very important for, for us to discuss about it because some people think that the kind of marifat which Abu Talib was given to recognize Rasulullah, the messenger of the time, and the mother also, Fatima binti Asad, to recognize the status, the maqam, the position of the Holy Prophet. This marifat, some people think it is only for Anbiya. But however, no, yes, Anbiya are special people, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you have Ausiya, those who are helpers to the messengers, and then you have normal people who they have clean hearts. They have been purified. Their thoughts they think for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in, in a simple language, you can say they are not the people of this dunya. Mm -hmm. Their level is totally different. Sure. So it is very sad to see that some people, they come and question the Iman of Abu Talib. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. That uh, Abu Talib was a mushrik. Abu Talib was a kafir. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. This, this shows how juhal those people are. Mm -hmm. Because if Abu Talib can take care of the Holy Prophet the way he took care, him and his wife, not him alone, but the wife also. So you can see that the house which they were living in and the tarbiya they got from their forefathers, this reminds us about the religion of Hanifiya, which Ibrahim alayhi salam introduced. Right. So that marifa is connected with the faith which Ibrahim brought, right. and you can see the athar, you can see the remnants of uh, the iman which was brought by Ibrahim alayhi salam. And they recognize that Rasulullah is a special one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another way, it is like he's telling us that if you want to talk negative about Abu Talib, then see what came from the house of Abu Talib. You have Ali bin Abi Talib who is Mawlud al-Kaaba. Definitely, no. definitely. Why, for example, na'udhu billah, you know, his son will be born inside the house of the Kaaba. You know what I mean? Mm. And at the same time, you know, this, uh, this uh, spurious understanding uh, of the personality of Hazrat Abu Talib, which is raised by some, uh, this sh returns back to not their understanding of Hazrat Abu Talib, huh? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not that oh they haven't recognized or they don't know or they don't have the knowledge of Hazrat Abu Talib, but it shows the lack in their understanding of the Prophet himself. Uh. Son. They haven't understood mm. the purity of the Prophet. Mm, mm, mm. You know, they, when they are out of whatever jahala, out of animosity, out of jealousy, whatever that could be the reason, mm, mm, mm. when they are criticizing the Iman of Hazrat Abu Talib, they are actually criticizing the, the, the marifat of the Prophet. Indeed. How come the Prophet be in a house of a mushrik, for mm, example, mm, where mm. in Islam, the mushrik are considered as najis. Mm, 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 mm. You know, you know, it doesn't make sense. Mm. You know, how can the Prophet allowed the marriage of Hazrat Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad to continue? Mm. Where in Islam, for example, as soon as you know, we say that if your husband is a non-Muslim, the nikah is batil. But mm. Prophet allowed. So here, a mullah is more knowledgeable and wants to implement Islam more than the Prophet. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. How come the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, and Hazrat Khatija was recited by, by Hazrat Abu Talib? Ah, son, by you know, Abu Talib so son. their criticism or mm. their lack of understanding is not pointing out to their lack of understanding of Hazrat Abu Talib, but it is pointing out to their lack of understanding of the Prophet himself. Indeed. And I think, I think there are a lot to be, to be said about uh, the man of Abu Talib, his faith, and the corruption which was introduced, of course, by some enemies of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, because this, this is envy. Because they saw Ali alayhi salam was gifted from day one, he was born inside Al Kaaba. So they want, they want to reduce and diminish his status. So let us poke a hole within the life or in the life of Abu Talib and let us call him Mushri. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has decided Ali to be the Mawlud of Kaaba and his father is Abu Talib and the mother is Fatima binti Asad. Now, one thing which if we can go back a bit from the day one when Imam Ali alayhi salam was born inside Al Kaaba, you can see is this point. Yes. Few questions. Mm -hmm. How, number one, Fatima binti Asad managed to enter Al Kaaba and as you, you have truly and uh, correctly pointed that she didn't enter from the main door of Al Kaaba but it was from the opposite side, where today you can see the mark and people want to cover it, but still it's there. Number two, when Fatima binti Asad entered the Holy Kaaba, she stayed there for three days. Who helped Fatima binti Asad to deliver the baby Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam? Number three, three days you need proper nutrition, food, drink. Who offered to Fatima binti Asad? that for three days and then number four people who are there who are doing tawaf around al Kaaba, did they notice that this lady is entering al Kaaba? what happened they didn't find out why they didn't raise alarm to say hey people come we saw a woman entering here but then we don't know what's happened let's go 
But they were all quiet until when she came out of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this can tell us that there was a mu'jiza by itself which happened. And it's, it's so sad to say that when we talk about mu'jiza, some people connect only mu'jiza with Rasulullah mm -hmm. or any messenger of Allah. Of course, mu'jiza is for the Holy Prophet. Yes. But mu'jiza, if you want to call it in another words, karamat. Yes. Signs which are spiritual signs can be done by normal people. And for Fatima binti Asad to enter Al-Kaaba to give birth of Imam Amirul Muminin inside Al-Kaaba, these were the karamat not only of her, but of the maulud of Kaaba also, Imam Ali bin Abi right. Talib salawatullahi right. wa salamuhu alayhi. Exactly. Very, very, very technical point that you pointed out to. And we discussed this, uh, you know, uh, as we, uh, as you deliver, alhamdulillah. Uh, we are very pleased Barakallah. that you are one of uh, the teachers of the houses, alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, in the, in Bab Hadi Ashar, you mm -hmm. know, in the book of uh, Allama Hilli and other books, you know, Kashful Murad and all of these books where we talk about the prophethood mm -hmm. <laughs> and we say yes mojiza is particularly for the prophets indeed technically speaking right you know a miracle is for the prophet a miracle but uh, but the term miracles unfortunately it has dropped or it has c changed for any uh, s supernatural act mm -hmm. we say miracle you know, something happened, oh, a miracle happened. What about miracle is particularly for the prophets? Indeed. Theologically speaking, yes. But as you said, exactly pointed out is the karama, mm. you know, which is also a supernatural act, but not by the prophet, because if a prophet performed, that is mojiza, mm. that is a miracle. But if a waliullah performed, it somebody who is a spiritual one, that is karama. So now, this waliullah, Mm. You know, who is the wali of Allah? Aliun waliullah. From his very birth, there is, wila, you know, there is Subhanallah. karama. Subhanallah. You know, Subhanallah. the karama is born with his birth as well. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. 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 right? So and, and, and actually you're right because uh, I, I know some communities, sometimes they may say that, you know, this boy, this girl, he, this boy and this girl, there's a sign of showing that he or she is a special child because when he or she was born, this particular event happened. Normal people, they will associate or connect some events with the, the baby or baby girl or baby boy. But with Amirul Muminin alayhi salam, it's Al-Kaaba itself. Yes, definitely. And then you can see in the future what happened to Amirul Muminin. Right. Then you come to know that, yes, indeed, this is Mawlud Al-Kaaba. Right. And what happened at the time of birth and the place of birth right. shows that Ali is Waliullah. Yeah. Ali is a special one. Yeah. And it's only Ali who was gifted with those karamat yeah. after the Holy Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi right. Alaihi Wasallam. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, yes, it's not the time of the month of Ramadan yet for the Shahada. But if you look at it, mm. the birth is unique and special. The Shahada, also you know, the unique. martyrdom is unique and special. Mm -hmm. It clearly, clearly shows, Indeed. you know, from birth to death. You know, these both points, mm -hmm. you know, the birth point is the, is the highest level Indeed. in terms of the kamal of a mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, these days, even like common, you know, like we say, oh, when was the child born? On a Thursday night. Oh, mashallah. Mm -hmm. On a Friday. Oh, mashallah. Very mm -hmm. good. Which month? Which date? Oh, on Hajj time. Oh, in month of Ramadan. You know, these are the signs Indeed. which we, it makes us happy as well. Indeed. You know, there's some value to these things. Indeed. Right? Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, where, where was it born? In the Kaaba or in, for example, Karbala, in, you know, in, 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 in Medina, for mm. instance. These are good mm. places, some places of barakah, Indeed. blessing. Right? Indeed. So, yes, you know, if you look at the birth. Now, if we could kind of proceed, you know, extend our discussion uh, in regards to that birth. Mm. Like, you know, when we look at in the Quran, when Hazrat Maryam was about to give birth to Hazrat Isa, Isa alayhi salam, you know, she was one of the servants of the house of God. Indeed. But God says, Maryam, it is time mm. that you move out. You know, you go to a place because the time of birth is coming near, you know. And then for food, as you were mentioning point number two, which mm. was very important, mm. where was this three days mm. the food was coming from? You know, if you look at for Hazrat Maryam as well, 
you know, she disappeared from middle of the people. You know, they were friends, they were yeah. family members. She goes somewhere far. Mm. Nobody noticed anything. The same way how Fatima bin Asad went inside the house. Mm. Nobody really noticed anything, sure. right? You know, it's the same argument is there. Mm, mm, you know, mm, mm. she went and she's gone. And all of a sudden she comes with a baby. Mm. Right? So it's the same argument. What happened? Yeah, indeed. And, 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 and uh, unfortunately, sometimes we talk, we say history repeats itself. Yes. But for some of us Muslims, we don't connect mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the events of some awliyaullah with other awliyaullah. Yes. And it's, it is as if, unfortunately, we restrict the power of Allah and the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give karamat to normal people. We, we, it is as if we are telling Allah, no, 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 the door is closed. Whatever happened to Maryam will not happen to anyone else. Whatever mm -hmm. happened to this messenger will not happen to any other normal person. Yeah. But this, this is wrong. And especially if we are Muslims today and we remember that kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas, you are, are the best nation which has been uh, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to all other ummah. So there are many uh, anecdotes mm -hmm. which happen within the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu yes. alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We need just to open our eyes and ears to say, yes, this can happen. And we shouldn't say that it's impossible, for example, for Imam Amirul Mumin to be born inside Al Kaaba, because it is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Inna amruhu ida arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. If Allah decides anything to happen, He just tell be, and it is already there. So Imam Amirul Mumin, He is a miracle in His birth and in all of His life. One point I wanted also to just connect to what we have been discussing here is about Abu, Abu Talib was given the assignment, if I can call it, to take care of Imam Amirul Muminin alayhi salam by his father, Abdul Muttalib. So Abdul Muttalib, he had many children, 10 at least. He pointed to Abu Talib to say, Abu Talib, I want you after my death to take care of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because I can see there is, there is a chemistry mm -hmm. between you and Muhammad. No one else among my children can take care of Muhammad except you. Sure. And Abu Talib accepted, even though in terms of uh, uh, whatever physical or you, if you want to say wealth, he wasn't as rich as his brothers but because there was a good chemistry between them. Yeah. And then later on, Abu Talib himself, his condition wasn't very good. The Holy Prophet came in and he said, my uncle, I want to take care of this baby, mm -hmm. baby Ali ibn Abi Talib. Mm -hmm. I want to take care of him. Why? Because the chemistry between Rasulullah and Ali ibn Abi Talib was so good. So Rasulullah took care of sure. Ali ibn Abi Talib. And then that, that tarbiyah which you mentioned, you can see it now with Khadija. Mm, yes. Rasulullah yes, and Khadija are taking care of Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam, wa alayhi, until the level where Ali says, I was with the Holy Prophet since my birth and the Holy Prophet used to feed me with his own hand and sometimes he would chew the food for me and then he would feed it for me. Subhan. Can you see the barakah of Rasulullah? Subhanallah. Whatever came from the hand of Rasulullah and from the mouth of Rasulullah is Barakah which Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi indeed, salam got indeed. that. And nobody else. I mean, nobody if you, else. Nobody so, else was taken care of the way mm, Ali bin Abi Talib mm, was taken care mm, of. Mm, I mean, it stands out. There's indeed. no comparison. Indeed. You know what I mean? Now, I just wanted to point out to some of the very important uh, issues that you mentioned now. Uh, and that is in regards to... Uh, you know, the, the, the spiritual karamat mm. that may have happened in history and history repeats and we see the pattern of the same things but we unfortunately, you know, we keep our eyes closed and we don't take lesson from, right? Uh, see, uh, you know, uh, history from the uh, philosophical point of view, from the Islamic understanding, is not considered as a time which is linear. Mm. 
you know, it begins here or it ends yeah. here. No. But it's cyclic. Mm -hmm. You know, those reality and those people and those haqqaiq unfold itself. That's why Thursday night mm. is a spiritual night every week. Mm -hmm. You know, so therefore the, the, the time on Thursday night becomes a time of connection to God. Again and again. Yeah, it's not like Thursday night, Thursday night, Thursday night. You know, that Thursday night is different. Mm -hmm. Last Thursday night was different today. No, it is again. Tanazzalul malaikatu war ruh. Inna anzallahu fi layla. It's tanazzalul. Night of Qadr is the same night of Qadr, which was at the time of the Prophet and which is going to happen. It's the same night of Qadr. Night of Qadr is night of Qadr. MashaAllah, beautiful. So the history is like that. You know, there are certain individual, pure people, like Hazrat Maryam, they will come again. Mm -hmm. But in the name of Fatima bint Asad, mm. by the name of Fatima to Zahra, mm -hmm. in the name of, you know, because they reach to that point of Kamal, where these all, you know, divine realities unfold for them. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so that's what's happened. You know, we have to take, we, have, we see a pattern, mm. you know, in history, where we can easily, you know, connect these things and come to the realization, you know, are we, on the right path, mm. you know, are we in the right camp of people where we are taking, where we are seeing this pattern mm. and it makes sense, yeah. you know, this is nothing but the truth, Indeed. you know, so, and this is also from the Islamic historical point of view, this is known as like a meta history, you know, there's history, okay, happen in the past, but there is beyond history, mm. where is meta history, yeah. which for example, one could say that, uh, you know, Kullu uh, min Ashura. Mm. All time is the time of Ashura. Ashura happened. But the meta history is that every day is the day of Ashura, mm. where there is Haqq and Batil, you sure. know, battle of Haqq. And every land becomes that land on which you're struggling, you know, with the Batil. So the same way history, it repeats. Now, Hazrat Maryam leaves, mm. you know, but here, Fatima bin Asad is invited in the house of God. Mm -hmm. Hazrat Maryam is asked to take leave. Mm. You know, Hazrat Maryam was asked to, basically she says that this date is dry. You know, there's mm. no dates on this. But God says, you know, struck, you know lift your hand, mm. work mm. towards mm. it, mm. do something. Indeed. And then it changes. That's a, that's a karam <coughs> indeed, you know, of Hazrat Maryam, of Hazrat Isa. But here we find that these three days, you know, what happened? You know, there was food of Behesh, Asa. of Jannah being revealed and give, given. Asa. And the same is for her as well. Mm. For Hazrat Maryam as well, we have seen the Hazrat Zakaria asked, where does this come from? Mm. You know, it's from the heaven. Right? So here, Fatima bint Asad, you know, given this task of this baby, and then, you know, uh, she was taken care by God. Mm. She was invited in the house of God. Allahu Akbar. That's very important. And... Uh, that limitations, again, if we go, go back to some people, they think that it is impossible. We use the word impossible for some karama to happen to the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of our limitations in terms of understanding and limitation in, in terms of uh, spiritual touch. So we, we don't go beyond this world. The way you have mentioned meta-history, also, we are talking about uh, physics and we don't go to metaphysics. Yes. So when we talk about Fatima binti Asad, we just want to, to know about physics. Food, there was no food around Al-Kaaba or inside Al-Kaaba. But the metaphysics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send the angels, can, can make everything to happen, even can make Fatima not to eat for three days and the life can continue without any problem at all. So when we talk about metaphysics, it's, it's something which we need to remember that Am Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam, was born inside Al-Kaaba. And the one who decided is the one who controls the, the world and the sciences and the physics and whatever. So he, he can be able to do anything according to his wishes. And it is something, again, we remember when Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam, was born inside Al-Kaaba, when he was growing up in Makkah, he could see Al Kaaba being surrounded by the idols. And in his mind, as Muwahid, look at what happened in Fatuh Makkah. He came to crush those idols to say, you know what? 
we have belongings with this holy house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this connection between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was nurtured by the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he took care of him in the house of Rasulullah and Khadija bint Khuwairid salamullahi alayha. This noble lady also took very good care of Ali bin Abi Talib in the house of an nubuwa and house of ar risala and you know then you look at you know the pattern Hazrat Khatija then you have Fatima salamu alayhi mm. in return you know mm. al jaza al ihsan illa al ihsan yeah. and, and, and it, it becomes so beautiful the whole sort of it's like a puzzle mm. you know mm -hmm. you try to connect all of these things and it points out to that wisdom of god that mm. hikmat mm. god as the musawwir you know yeah. is the one who have given this art you know made it very beautifully now if we go uh, a bit further, you know, the, the event of of Amir al muminin alayhi salam in the house of God, you know, he comes, uh, he is born. Um, uh, there are a couple of things that is quite important. Very briefly, perhaps we could shed some light. Mm. Uh, there is a term, uh, uh, and then we'll look at it. What really happened? How the log broke? How the prophet came? Mm. Hazrat Abu Talib? They all and the door open. And we'll look at that. But perhaps before that, I just wanted to very briefly in the margin to, you know, point out to some of the community, uh, they tend to use some of the terms mm -hmm. uh, in order to extend their greetings. Mm -hmm. You know, tabriq and mubarak badi and, you know, to give congratulations. They use some terms which they should be careful about, right? Because those are very technical terms and it has some... Uh, effects like for example you know you might have got those texts as well we say zuhur -e fatime salamu mm -hmm. or zuhur of hazrat ali hazrat ali yeah. in the house of god yeah no it's not zuhur it's mm. it's, it's maulud mm -hmm. or wilada it's wilada you know it's is uh, hazrat ali is a maulud you know hazrat ali is a wilada tawallud mm -hmm. you know it's not zuhur you know zuhur is a wrong term yeah and as a matter of fact it belittles mm. the personality by saying zuhur. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or they say nuzul, for example, nuzul of, you know, for example, you know, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it belittles that reality of that birth. And when we look at the duas, like, for example, you have dua of Rajab. Yeah. You know, Allahumma inni asaluka, uh, you know, has maulud fi hadir. Yeah. Yeah. That dua of Rajab. Yeah. Had the Shahr or had the Yom on the day of yes. the Wilad of Imam Amir al Mumin. Right. Yeah. And also for Imam Hussein, we have, O oh Allah, for the sake of this Maul, you know, for mm. the sake of this Maulud, for the, the sake of this person who is born mm. on this day, on and this and day and of this the third, month. and mm. who was tested, and so on, and who the heaven and earth cry, and all that. You know, the, the word of Tawallud, the word of birth is used yeah. not appeared mm. you know the mm. word of birth is used or in the for Hazrat um, uh, Imam Baqir alayhi salam we have in the month of Rajab we recite that dua sure haqqi hada you know the person who was born mm. in this month mm. you know uh, who is Imam Baqir alayhi salam and I think Imam Muhammad Taqi as well yeah. in that dua we recite in the dua of Rajab so this word of birth is very important Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we say, you know, milad, rather than not, duhur. not duhur. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you totally because when we use these uh, Arabic terminologies, we need to know the depth of the meanings which are there. Because when you say duhur, it is like someone was uh, in ghaiba or not present here and then he came, he appeared. So that is duhur. But when we talk about maulud, we talk about the birth of this particular individual. And on the 13th day of Rajab, we celebrate the Maulud of the one who was born in Al-Kaaba. And that is Ali bin Abi Talib. We don't celebrate the Zuhur because he wasn't in Ghaiba. He was born. So, yeah, it's correctly said that it is Maulud or we celebrate the Wilada mm -hmm. of Imam Amir al -Mu'minin. And it is not the whore because this can be can given a different connotation and a different meaning, and we may 
uh, instead of elevate the status of Amirul Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam the way it is, Allah has elevated it. Then we go to something which is not is it's not even mentioned by Rasulullah or Ali alayhi salam himself or Aimma al athar alayhi salam or Zahra alayhi salam or even the credible scholars have not mentioned anything like uh, Dhuhur, mm -hmm. but yeah. they have mentioned Maulud. And it is it is correct yeah. to, to remind I mean, the no, no doubt. I mean, we are of the belief indeed, you know, Avvalu ma khalq Allah mm. you know, It's that Muhammadan light. You know, they were present, the Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, for whom the whole creation is khair, mm. you know, khalaq. Mm. Saman Mabniya, you know, you know, no doubt that is mm. for sure, you know. But the point is that to point out to when it's in that physical world, yeah, is that is that maulud, is that tawalud. It's very important to mention that because what will happen, I'll tell you what will happen now when you are saying zuhur, you know, it appeared, then you know, it's just like they came and they left. Mm. So mm. their suffering will have no example, meaning. no mm. meaning. Their shahadat will have no meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, then their place of ziyarat yeah. will have no meaning. Yeah. So all of this is kind of done in a very sort of subtle way to undermine, mm. you know, the, to undermine that maulud of Kaaba is a birth of Amir Ruin in Kaaba. That's what it's an honor, yeah. right? Not that it's just zuhur, it just happened to come. Sure. You know, it's sure. that birth, mm, mm, you know, that mm. phenomenon of birth itself. Yeah, and yeah. I think even for our, our young audience, our young children, when we talk to them, if we use the word maulud, it's easy to appeal to them. They understand it easy. Mm -hmm. But if you use zuhur, these terms, even it's difficult for them to follow and understand it. Yeah. And what happened on the 13th of Rajab is Wilada of Ali alayhi salam. It was in Duhur. Yeah. So I think we need to keep it that way in order for us to say we celebrate the Wilada of Maulud al Kaaba and that is Ali, Ali bin Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salam. Yes. Yes. Yeah, very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we go a bit further to discuss that how they all gather now. Mm. You know, one side the wall opened, she went inside, it was closed again, and then the third day. Yeah. Right. Where they all arrive, you know, Hazrat Abu Talib alayhi salam and everybody. And then it's been said that the Prophet comes finally. Mm. That's mm. the time when that door of Kaaba, mm. you know, the lock, which was always there, which still was quite famous, you know, yeah. that lock is has barakah and blessing. Yeah. You know, the key, the caretaker of the the key, the holder of the key, it has mm. some very important value. Indeed. You know, very symbolic value. Mm. You know, that log automatically breaks. And then the Prophet enters, Subhan takes Allah. the baby, mm. right? Now here, the first time, the eyes of Ali ibn Abi Talib opens Akbar. to see Allahu the face Akbar. of the Prophet. Subhanallah. Allahu so the first thing he saw was the face of the Prophet. Mm. And then Hazrat uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sallam, he takes the baby and he places his tongue inside the mouth of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yes. MashaAllah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this one has got uh, a big effect in the child to see the, f the first face as the face of Rasulullah. It means to, s to look at the nur, nurun nubuwa, mm -hmm. the nur which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen it. That nur which was created first before each and everything else, the connection again comes in between Ali alayhi salam and Rasulullah. Yes. And you can see from day one. And then whatever a baby eats besides or uh, drinking the mother's milk, uh, if it is honey, has got connection with the soul and the body of this baby. Saliva of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Also, it's barakah. And in, in, in many a hadith from the Holy Prophet, texts, uh, sayings of the Holy Prophet, you can see that, for example, someone was ill, the Holy Prophet applied his saliva on the eyes or places, and they became cured. With Amirul Muminin, you can see it again. Mm -hmm. Day one, the Holy Prophet kissed the baby, and you can see the link between Rasulullah and Ali bin Abi Talib. And then after the battle, of, before the battle of Khaybar, Yes. 
When Ali bin Abi Talib was ill, his eyes were not okay. The Holy Prophet said, call me Ali. This is the third day now. This is going to be the third day. We need to open the gate of Khaybar. They said, Ali is not well. He said, call him. He's not well, Ya Rasulullah. He said, what's wrong? His eyes are not okay. Call him. When he was called, the Holy Prophet applied the saliva of himself on the eyes of Ali. Ali came to see. The connection between Ali and Rasulullah has been always there. Indeed. And that's why the Holy Prophet, I, I remember the hadith where he says, Ana wa Ali abawa al umma. I and Ali will be the fathers of this ummah. Abawa al umma means what? I take care of the ummah and Ali also will take care of the ummah. Why? Because I have taken care of Ali from day one. After he was born, I was there for Ali bin Abi Talib. And Ali will continue to take care of this message of Islam. Indeed, indeed. Mm. And also uh, the naming of the of Hazrat Ali alayhi salam. Mm. You know, Hazrat Abu Talib waited. Uh, Fatima bint Asad salam alayha. She also waited, and it was I mean, it was the Prophet, you know, who had that inspiration, that divine inspiration. Mm. Uh, you know, in terms of obviously wahi in the sense that it happened, you know, from Iqra, but that connection, yeah. you know, God, you know, Prophet speaking, you know, these personalities when they speak, they are divinely inspired. And, you know, they say you have to name the child, you know, as Ali, mm. you know, because Allah is Ala. And, you know, this child should, should be, be Ali. Ali. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And, and names have uh, a big impact with our children. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is very important that we have to, you know, inform our viewers that, you know, make sure that, you know, you, you, you give good names uh, to the people who are, to the children who are born. And it is the right of the children, you know, on the shoulder on the neck of the parents yeah. that they should be named a good name yeah indeed you know. and 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 uh, when we talk about names you can see that uh, even even the impact of the name ali was seen by muhammad ali the boxer muhammad ali the clay yeah oh clay he he said my name was clay right and clay means dust yes but then i came to learn that uh, there was a messenger of allah and his name was Muhammad and Muhammad means the praised one and then I came to know the name Ali Ali the one who is elevated in the highest status so I decided my name to be Muhammad Ali he himself says since that day I could see many blessings and uh, we hear that uh, in in America in Hollywood that, that, that we, ha we haven't been there <laughs> But there is a what they call the yeah in Los Angeles yeah, yeah the place yeah. where the names are written the Wall of Fame yeah and yeah. Muhammad Ali was asked can we put your name on the ground on the ground so people when they walk they yeah. pass on the ground and he rejected yeah he said no I um, I can't why because these are holy names yeah. Muhammad and, and Ali. Ali how can I put the two names there uh. and Subhanallah he thought carefully. Yes, and, and what we can learn here is that we need to give the, the names, yeah. good names yeah. to our yeah. children, yeah. And, and I'll continue. And you know, the, the, they put it on the wall. Uh -huh, because yeah, it's not on the, yeah, it's there. They put the name yeah. you know, to honor him, but they didn't put it on the floor. Masha it's Allah. on the wall. Masha Allah. <laughs> so this is to honor Muhammad and Ali. And I think and any God honored him. See, Indeed. You know, it's like, that's why Hal Jazawul Hassan, that pattern, you know, which we have to learn, that mm. meta history. You yeah. Know. Uh, and, and the names, uh, good names for our children is very important, as you said, because the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is the right of the children to be given good names. And of course, you will, not never, you will never go wrong if you give the names of your children, names of Prophets, Imma Alayhi Wasallam, and of course, name Muhammad and Ali, you will never, never go wrong with those names. Now, unfortunately, sometimes... Uh, we have some friends, family friends, families. They may choose names without any meanings because the names sound good. I think that is, is a point which we need to think about. They careful. want some modern names, mm. you know, some stylish names, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that causes trouble. I, I remember I had a friend of mine uh, who named his son, uh, well, a name which, because it sounds good, but the meaning wasn't good. 
we, we try to talk to him and we say, well, co correct this name because why it sounds Arabic and the, it sounds good. It sounds good, but the meaning wasn't good. So change this. Why? Because the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has changed the names of some of his companions. For example, uh, one was known as Ghawi. Mm -hmm. Ghawi is like the one who causes trouble. He attacks people. It's like a robber. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Prophet said, no, no, your name is, the, 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 Ghawi is the one who mislead people. He said, no, your name is not Ghawi. You can't be a Ghawi. So he changed his name. Dhalim. Another person said, my name is Dhalim. <laughs> I'm the one who causes injustice. So the Holy Prophet said, no, change your name. But name Ali will always be one of the Indeed. best names. And that's why the Holy Prophet gave the name Ali to Imam no Amirul. Yeah, these are Ali beautiful names, inshallah. Indeed. inshallah. Indeed, we'll continue in our next program uh, to Allah. look into the personality of Amir al muminin his upbringing and his youth, inshallah. Uh, and inshallah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, no, Sheikh. thank it you to you. It was indeed an honor indeed, to be here nice and to discuss it. Alhamdulillah. 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 Baraka. And thank you to all our viewers as well uh, for being with us. And inshallah, we'll hope to see you again, inshallah, uh, in the continuation of the program, in the continuation of this discussion. Uh, in regards to uh, the leader of the faithful. Thank you. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.